So this video was created to help eliminate some of the confusion that seems to be behind what's really going on with our vaccines today. And we're going to discuss today what's really in the flu vaccine per the vaccine insert supplied by the manufacturer. This video will explore this year's flu vaccine insert. Rather than discussing and speculating, we're going to go right to the source and look at the vaccine insert provided by GlaxoSmithKline. For those who don't know what they are, a vaccine insert is the packaging insert that the manufacturer of any vaccine or medication is required to provide when they're distributing their product. These vaccine inserts list drug information, adverse effects, benefits versus risk, and how to administer the drug, among other things. Since the influenza season for 2015 to 2016 is approaching, this presentation is going to explore the flu label vaccine insert by GlaxoSmithKline. This vaccine insert and any others um, that we're using here in this presentation can be obtained by visiting the U.S. Food and Drug Administration page located at www.fda.gov. As we're going through this presentation, all page numbers to all information will be noted when the information appears on screen as to where you can locate this information on the vaccine insert. Whenever possible, this author has attempted to show photos of the actual insert along with highlighted or reddened areas to demonstrate the information that is being explored and looked at throughout this video presentation. So if you're ready, let's go ahead and begin. So as previously stated, we're going to be looking at the flu label vaccine that is produced by GlaxoSmithKline. This is a picture of the multi-dose vial that is supplied and this was um, what was administered during the 2013 and 2014 influenza season. Along with the influenza vaccine bottle, you also get what's called the vaccine insert. This is a photograph of what a sample vaccine insert would look like. And again, these are available also from the Food and Drug Administration's webpage as well. Once you open up the vaccine insert, you're going to see a lot of interesting information right off the start. Um, page one of the vaccine insert is going to list indications, use, dosage, contraindications, warning, adverse effects, um, and what use it's supposed to have in specific populations. GlaxoSmithKline also lists the information on how to contact the VAERS reporting system should you have an adverse reaction. This vaccine is approved for use in persons aged 3 and older. The vaccine is contraindicated for anyone having a history of reaction to the vaccine or any egg allergies. And adverse reactions are going to include pain, swelling, flu-like symptoms, and possibly loss of appetite as well. Per the CDC, the vaccine is often recommended for all pregnant women. However, the vaccine insert states on page one that safety and effectiveness of flu label have not been established in pregnant women or nursing mothers. GlaxoSmithKline requests that any pregnant women receiving the vaccine be registered with them. On page 10 of the insert, GlaxoSmithKline states that they maintain a surveillance registry, but does not specifically mention what is monitored, how it is monitored, or what information is shared or kept private with them. And this is a picture of page one um, showing the statement that is listed on the vaccine insert regarding the safety and effectiveness of the vaccine in pregnant women or nursing mothers. We're going to explore what GlaxoSmithKline says about the pregnant women and receiving this vaccine a little bit later in the presentation. For now, we're going to move on. Um, finally, on page one, GlaxoSmithKline states that antibody responses were lower in geriatric subjects who received flu label than in younger subjects. 
And here is a highlighted photo showing that antibody response statement. This statement is basically suggesting that elderly patients are not receiving the full protection from the influenza vaccine. I feel that it's also worth noting that on previously released versions of this vaccine insert, page one stated that there have been no controlled trials adequately demonstrating a decrease in influenza disease after vaccination with flu label. This statement is not mentioned on this year's vaccine insert though, so I just wanted to mention that. And here we also have a picture showing that previous statement, and this was on the 2013-2014 formulary um, of the flu vaccine insert. Page two explains dosing requirements, and interestingly enough, it recommends that children aged three to eight have not one, but two doses of the vaccine, and that they should be given at least four weeks apart. For adults, the dosing requirements are one to two doses of 0.5 mLs, depending on previous vaccination status. Moving on to page four, you'll notice that page four states that vaccination with flu label may not protect all susceptible individuals. Over the next few pages, the vaccine insert lists information from a controlled study, but it doesn't say who funded the study or if independent labs and peer reviewers corroborated the findings that they did. There were three steps to the randomized controlled study that were completed, and the study was completed using flu label, a competitor flu zone, and a placebo injection. Page six discusses the most common side effects seen following the vaccine trials that were administered. Several of these symptoms, such as fatigue, muscle aches, and fever, are what is commonly referred to as flu-like symptoms. And here we have a quick snapshot showing those side effects listed. Digging a little further into the vaccine insert, we find that the following is true as potential adverse effects of flu label. There is a risk for Guillain-Barre syndrome. If a person is immunocompromised, the immune response may be lower in these patients, and that vaccination may not protect everyone who receives the vaccine. Let's now go ahead and look at the differences between adverse effects versus adverse events as they're reported and as the requirements are there for these. So an adverse effect is going to be a bad side effect of a drug um, administration. So an example of this would be something such as an allergy to penicillin or something to that effect. So adverse events are usually referred to during the research trial process of any drug administration. So the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services defines adverse events as any untoward or unfavorable medical occurrence in a human subject, including any abnormal sign, symptom, or disease temporarily associated with the subject's participation in the research and whether or not considered related to the subject's participation in the research. So the following are some reported adverse events um, that are listed on the vaccine insert, and this is post-flu label administration. So we have lymphadenopathy, chest pain, allergic reaction, seizures, paralysis, dyspnea, and in more. Guillain-Barre syndrome is listed as an adverse effect as well. This can cause paralysis and other serious complications. Any adverse reactions to this vaccine should be reported to a physician immediately. Adverse events following vaccination should be reported to the manufacturer and with the vaccine adverse event reporting system. Earlier, we said we'd look again at what this vaccine insert says about the administration of this drug to pregnant women. So at this time, let's go ahead, look back and explore this a little bit further. So if you're looking at your vaccine insert, please turn to page 10, where it's gonna delve much further into the administration for a pregnant woman. It's important to note that GlaxoSmithKline states that because animal reproduction studies are not always predictive of human response, flu labels should be given to a pregnant woman only if clearly needed. And here is a screenshot of that vaccine insert page. 
There has always been lots of speculation and discussion about how flu vaccines are created. So page 11 actually discusses this and it says that the flu-label influenza vaccine for intramuscular injection is a trivalent split virion inactivated influenza virus vaccine prepared from virus propagated in the allentonic cavity of embryonated hen's eggs. Each of the influenza viruses is produced and purified separately. The virus is inactivated with ultraviolet light treatment, followed by formaldehyde treatment, purified by centrifugation, and disrupted with sodium deoxycholate. The prefilled syringe is formulated without preservatives and does not contain thimerosal. However, each 0.5 ml dose from the multi-dose vial contains 50 micrograms of thimerosal, which is a mercury derivative. The vaccine insert also lists a bunch of other chemicals that are used as preservatives in this vaccine. I'm not going to read all of them, but it's also important to note that antibiotics are not used in the manufacturer of this vaccine. Moving on to page 12 of the vaccine insert, it's discussing the mechanism of action and some points worth noting are that antibody against one influenza virus type or subtype confers little or no protection against another virus. And also, antibody to one antigenic variant of influenza virus might not protect against a new antigenic variant of the same type or subtype. The vaccine insert also goes on to say that inactivated influenza vaccines are standardized, so it's going to contain the guest strains that are likely to circulate in the United States in the upcoming winter. And finally, annual revaccination is recommended because immunity declines during the year after vaccination and because circulating strains of influenza virus change from year to year. Clinical trial results appear starting on page 14, and during clinical trials in children aged 3 to 8, the percentage that the flu label was effective was 55.4%, 55.9%, and 45.1% respectively. And this is a screenshot showing the efficacy of the vaccine trial. For the adults, the results of efficacy were reported to be 46.3% and 49.3% respectively. And again, we have a copy of the results of the adult trials for the flu vaccine. Patient counseling information comes in on pages 21 and 22 and some highlights of this are as follows. Inform of the potential benefits and risks of immunization with flu label. Inform that safety and efficacy have not been established in pregnant women and register women who receive flu label while pregnant in the pregnancy registry by calling 1-888-452-9622. And finally, give the vaccine information statements which are required by the National Childhood Vaccine Injury Act of 1986 prior to each immunization. These sheets are found on the CDC's website at www.cdc.gov. It is important that patients fully understand the risks and the benefits associated with receiving any vaccine. If you wish to view this vaccine insert along with any others, you can visit the FDA website at www.fda.gov where they have vaccine insert information for all vaccines produced in the United States. If you or someone you know has been harmed by a vaccine, you may fill out an adverse event form via the Vaccine Adverse Event Reporting System.